Hi, I'm Gene, and welcome to Assess Minutes, where we take a complex assessment topic and break it down to make it easily understandable, because minutes matter. What is item response theory, and how does it relate to your students' test scores? My name is Adam Wise, and I'm here to present your Assess Minute video on item response theory. Let's take a look over here. First, we can think about a traditional test. This is probably the test that you're most familiar with. Typically, if they get 60 out of 100 correct, their score is going to be 60 no matter what questions they get right and what questions they get wrong. Now, a lot of modern tests actually work a bit differently than that. We can think of a computer adaptive test, for example. Here, we may have two different students that get 24 out of 34 items correct, and they end up with different scores. One of the students gets 597, and the other student gets 603. How is that possible? Well, item response theory models actually look at the properties of the test items that the student is getting right or wrong to actually figure out a score. If they get the easier items, that's where they might end up with that score of 597. But if they got a harder set of items, they would get a score of 603. So item response theory models are very useful. And when we actually have to think about them, there's a variety of different models that are actually possible. We can generally categorize them using three different factors. The first factor is the number of abilities that the student actually has to have to be able to answer the question correct. The second factor is how we actually score the questions. And the third factor is the number of parameters that are actually in the model. At Renaissance, we've experimented with a lot of different models, and we've decided to use the unidimensional dichotomous one-parameter model because we found that that actually works best. Now, what does that mean? Well, in our model, math items only measure math ability. They only measure one single thing. And they're dichotomously scored. That means a student either gets it right or they get, to get it wrong. And we're actually only looking at their student ability and their item difficulty when we're actually scoring the test. So a question you may have is, why do we use a model as complicated as item response theory to score star assessments? Well, item response theory models have a variety of really nice properties. One of the things that they allow us to do is they allow us to take student ability and item difficulty and put it on a single scale. And they allow us to directly compare student scores when they're seeing different types of questions, just like this. And they allow us to actually look at growth and change in ability over time, which is often very, very useful. And we can also map the scores that students receive to learning progressions and instructional materials to provide recommendations. So you can see item response theory models have a lot of different tools that allow us to do things that we actually want with our test scores. To learn more about computer adaptive assessments such as the STAR assessments, be sure to watch our assessment video on adaptive testing.